Church and ready. Thank you, Anton, and welcome everybody if you'd like to be seated. Oh, it's wonderful to see you again. It's wonderful to see people who have returned from being afar. Thank you for coming back. And for all of you who are joining us from home or someplace else, we say thank you for being with us this morning. So let us start our service this morning with prayer. And let us settle ourselves wherever we are, letting the sofa or the chair or the stool just hold all of our weight, knowing that we do not have to hold ourselves, that we are being held. We are being held by this furniture that we're sitting on by the foundation of the building where we are and by the earth which is held by the universe and by God. So as we relax into this deep sense of knowingness that we are safe because we are held, we do so with a great sense of gratitude. And with great joy, as we move through our morning, we know that our hearts are filled with love, that our hearts are filled with gladness. And we do say, for this opportunity to be together, both in spirit and in person, we say thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And Juliana, would you like to light the Christ candle for us this morning? <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. And let us say with Juliana, we light this candle to remind us that the light of Christ lives within each one of us. And let us say together, I am the light of Christ. And now this morning we have a great treat. <laughs> we are going to have Laura sing our it's Lord's a Prayer. Treat. And um, I, I know some of you like to sing along, and that is absolutely and fine. Now if you want to. Our Father. No. Good, huh? Try it again. Try it again. Try it again. How's that? Nope. How is that? Not on. Not on. Okay, now we're on. All right. That's good because we have a real important uh, affirmation to share today, and it's uh, uh, guidance. And guidance. The Daily Word tells us that uh, we need to listen to our inner wisdom and be guided to live our purpose. Within our mind and our heart, intuition flows. And this is what we need to rely on that carries us into wisdom in making the choices we do in our lives. So let's share the affirmation for today. And it is, I am a radiating center of light and understanding. And let's say it all together. Not up there yet? It's a different one. It's a different one. How about I listen to an inner wisdom? <laughs> Just seeing if you guys are awake, you know? Okay, I listen to inner wisdom, and I'm guided to live my purpose. And let's say it together. I listen to inner wisdom. And I'm guided to live my purpose. And now for our unity consciousness statement, and let's say this together. Divine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanded prosperity, attendance, and by being a light on the path for others. And now for some special singing what is mine to give? Now, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to use those little shakers and things on this one, too. Oh, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm got, I've got the wrong thing here. <laughs> one, two, three. What is mine to give? What is mine to do? 
All I want is to share myself with you. So I stand here asking, what can I do? What is mine to give? I give it to you. You can stand. What is mine to give? What is mine to do? All I want is to share myself with you. So I stand here asking, what can I do? What is mine to give? Good morning, good morning, everybody. And a special hello to all of you joining us from afar. And um, we welcome you to share with us the daily word. Uh, the theme this morning is world peace. Uh, and I, without any politics or whatever, I'm just, I'm very, very grateful today uh, for the relationships we're reestablishing throughout the world. Uh, at least on, on the leadership level, that hopefully will lead to peace in, in varied ways in each country and with all people. So thank you, God. Our, our, our theme today, <coughs> our affirmation, rather, is peace shared between people spreads throughout the world. Would you join with me, please? Peace, peace shared, shared between, between people. people spreads throughout the world. I contribute to world peace when I join in spirit with all people who dedicate themselves to expressing divine love, united in the belief that God is within everyone. I affirm the divinity of humankind and honor each person as a unique expression of God. I recognize and release any unkind thoughts or feelings toward any person or group of people. I respect all others and seek to learn more about customs and beliefs that are unfamiliar to me as I grow in a spirit of kinship. I believe a warm, friendly attitude communicates my intentions as effectively as my words. I smile easily and extend myself to others in a spirit of friendship. I remain mindful that as peace flowers between individuals, peace grows in the world. This was inspired by, uh, from, uh, from a verse, Micah, fourth chapter, uh, verse three. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore.
as we have opened our hearts here today, we open our minds as well. That peace in mind to give God all the wonderful blessings of gratitude. So as we've come together here today to hear the message, we open to all of it the world peace coming together in that divine light and love. So as we go into meditation, this quiet time right here and now, we open our hearts to receive whatever it is that your God wants to give you today. So take a deep breath with me. Feel the chair, whatever you're sitting on, holding you as if God is holding you in his arms. Take that deep breath. Feel your shoulders dropping and just relax. So as we come back into this room, we bring that love and light and that peace. And we would like to hold each one of our friends and family in this same light and love. I hold everyone in the prayer box, all of those names that have been put in there and the names of the people that put it in there. I hold that in them up as well. So if you'll join me right now in speaking the names aloud that you would like to share that peace with, that love and joy. And if you'll join me by confirming this, by speaking your own name aloud with me, Kathy. So as we've come together and confirming all of this light and love within each and every one of us, we give love and gratitude for the God within each one of us that has given us that unconditional love. So through the powers and the presence that dwells within each and every one of us, we say thank you, God, and so it is. We're going to sing a song that we wrote, and it is called Quiet Truth. 
but there's a little chorus, Om Shanti 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 Om, which means Om, peace, 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 Om. That's in keeping with today's theme. And if you'd like to sing along with that part, Om Shanti 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 Om, please join us. Thank you, Laura and Anton. That was absolutely moving and takes us right into where I want everyone to be for this particular lesson. As you know, we are finishing our lesson on, we're finishing, we're, this isn't the last one, we are working through the Beatitudes. And this particular Beatitude is, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now, blessed comes from, is taken from the word beati that was found in the Vulgate, which is the principal Latin version that was written by St. Jerome in the 4th century and began as the Bible. And it was 
edited and changed in 1592, and it was adopted as the official language of the Bible by the Roman Catholic Church. In using the word, Jesus indicates what will be especially honored and receive that special honor in his new kingdom. For Jesus' point, we need to observe what the Pharisees were teaching at that time. And they were teaching that the most important thing was to follow ecclesiastical law, which was a large conglomeration of man-made rules. And they had to be followed verbatim. And that's what the Pharisees taught. It was a very shallow teaching that you could be recognized as being a godly person by following man-made commandments. They thought themselves as, as accepted and men of God, even though at the time, most of them probably were not. So the idea of what it was that Jesus talked about in his mission, that it was the difference between a, realist, a ritualistic observation and the indwelling goodness of spirit or character. That was the difference of what Jesus was telling us when he ascended the mount and gave us the Beatitudes. We know that this character that Jesus was talking about depends on our state of mind. It's noticed when the Lord was talking about the character formation gives us nine of these stages that he talks about in the Beatitudes. And these are the basis of character which God in these benedictions rest. Six, look within and tell us how to act within ourselves. But three, deal with how we deal with the outer world. And they are the meek, which describes a man's attitude to opposition and hatred. How should we respond? The merciful, which describes the indulgences in judgment and our weakness of action. And the peacemakers, for Christian people are not merely to bear injuries and turn the other cheek with forgiveness and love. But they're to be active in the bringing about of wholesome and a purer state of humanity. Sounds a lot like unity's fifth principle. But it's just not enough that we know it but we have to apply it. And that's what Jesus was saying when they were talking about the idea of blessed are the peacemakers. Now, the meaning of the word blessed at the time, that we're talking about at the time of Jesus, was happiness. So when they use the word blessed, they're talking about happiness. And we know that spirit has installed this happiness as a human nature. We crave for happiness, love. And it sets itself up as the ultimate end or chief good. It's almost a truism when we say that if someone is truly happy, they've attained. And there's no more that we need to do for them. They've reached that state of happiness. Because we know that other things, like wealth and power, are the means to something else. But happiness is sought for its own sake. I know that when we talk about what we seek, it's often lost because often 
It's when we stop seeking that we truly find. I know that Jesus didn't tell us to seek happiness that we could be rich. And we certainly don't seek other things in our lives to fulfill happiness. But often we get caught in that, don't we? I've always liked the idea of those people who seek riches and wisdom and knowledge thinking it will lead to happiness. But it in fact does not. And that's what Jesus is talking about, is that guard against those things that appear to give us what our human nature is seeking, happiness. Young children don't seek to grow to adulthood. They follow their inner nature of eating and of growing, of playing. And that's what Jesus is telling us, is that if we follow our human nature, we will find happiness when we stop seeking it. And it's often not when we talk to ourselves, is, is this something we should be doing or not? We ask the question of ourselves, is this right or is this wrong? And by making the correct decision time after time in our lives, we attain happiness without even looking for it. It's that appetite, that following what contributes to my happiness. We know that most of the passages that Jesus talks about gives us the opportunity and it tells us of the happiness that we can have when we follow. The ultimate command was seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Happiness is found when righteousness is sought. Going back to our fifth principle. Is it right or is it wrong in our life? Are we making choices that add to our happiness or take away? Sometimes we don't even think about that. And that's what this idea is talking about. When we come to the word peacemakers, well, who are the makers of peace? At the time... If the word used was peace, and it's from the Latin, it would be pax. And what it meant to Roman usage was that there was calmness in the empire, that there was no open rebellion, that they were not having to put down isolated events. It was called pax romana. That's what peace was to the Romans. If we go back to the original Greek, the word for happiness is arena. And the essence of the Greek word is quietness or rest, similar to the way we think about it today. But once again, I think this really underplays what Jesus had in mind when he was talking about blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus was offering his disciples and the others that went up that mount that day. And we, as we read the words that were said so many years ago, not just the lack of hostility, as Latin tells us, or rest, as the Greek tell us, but I think it was closer to Shlomo, the Aramaic, or shalom in Hebrew. The meaning of those languages is completeness, wholeness, everything being as it should, 
everything within creation working together. Shalom. Well, if we know that's what peace was ultimately meant to be, and Jesus is saying is blessed are those that find that peace in creation working together, being whole and complete. How do we attain it? How do we find it? If we listen to Emmett Fox and other theologians, they talk about that it is only through prayer and meditation is this peace found. Do we find serenity in our heart and in our soul? And the thing that we often miss is that each time we pray, we get closer and closer and closer that end. It's said that in every prayer and every prayer of thanksgiving or meditation, it affects us a little bit. And every time we do it, we keep turning towards spirit. Every time we pray and meditate. Maybe just a little, but sometimes there are big shifts when things in our prayers we see as being answered, or we hold that that just that couldn't possibly happen because we know that all prayers are answered, just not the way at times we think they will. So the peacemakers that Jesus is talking about in this beatitude is finding that happiness within through prayer and meditation. Being at peace with all creation, with each other, with our lives, with where we're going and what we're doing. Serenity. Getting closer and closer to spirit and lifting our consciousness. So in closing, I see Al saying, yeah, closing, I like that. <laughs> and in closing, I give you this day the understanding of the nature of being happy. In knowing that you are right with the world, and that's the goal, your happiness. That you do what is right in the world, and it is through prayer and meditation that we find our direction, that we listen to spirit, that we act upon what we hear. And if our lives aren't working, and we aren't finding this happiness, we choose again. We change what we're doing. We change who we are each time we go into praise. So I leave you with this biblical saying. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Because it is through spirit that we find the happiness that is our human nature. The spirit desires us to have. God bless. And thank you.
Okay, so if our ushers will please come forward. And it is our time that we give with open and generous hearts, knowing that as we do give, we do receive. So let us hold our offering in our hands together and say, Divine love through me, bless us and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, ushers, for coming forth with this abundance. Oh, Divine Spirit, we give thanks for this truly abundant giving that has taken place here today. We know that these funds will move forth into our community, blessing this congregation, this sanctuary, and all of the things that we complete for our community. And we give thanks. So it is. Amen. Ken, before you give the offer or the announcements, I just want to say thank you for that nice talk. I just, I was a little bit off. <laughs> so thank you for that talk, reminding us that peace and happiness are ours. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And since we're passing out thank yous, I'd like to pass out a thank you for our own Diana. Did everyone hear the babbling of our fountain. It's, it's been babbling for seven years, and about a month ago, it decided that it wanted to stop babbling. So Diana took it home and lovingly uh, cleaned it and cared for it and prayed with it and brought it back today and set it up, and now it's gurg gurgling for us again. Thank you, Diana. Uh, this coming week, Tuesday through Thursday, our office hours are still 10 to 4, but we have a special event going on. Uh, Unity's convention is this week. So Carol and I will be attending 
virtually since it's not being held in person. So even though we're going to be here, we're probably going to be caught up in the convention because there's various uh, breakout groups and activities that we will be participating on. So if you do need to come in, you may want to check timing uh, of when our activities will be. Uh, also, uh, prayer is offered before and after service, uh, and also with today, after service, with uh, Kathy. She'll be our prayer chaplain today. Uh, we still have a little time to do our spring tea. The spring tea is set up for the 19th, so this would be the final time to sign up for our gathering. Uh, the group meetings this week will be A Course of Love and A Course of Miracles, and check the bulletin board for the activities for our various uh, so, uh, community events with AA. And also, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday, and if for any reason that you can't join us, you can always join us from afar. Thank you very much. Anything else we need to cover? Well, that is our uh, announcements for today, and we will go into our peace song. So if you feel so moved, you could stand and join in our singing. After that beautiful talk about peace, Ken, I think we all feel moved to join in the peace song. for protection the light of God surrounds us we are the light of God the love of God enfolds us we are the love of God the power of God protects us we embrace that power the presence of God watches over us we live our lives in God's presence wherever we are God is and so it is Thank you all so much for being here. We'll see you next week. Huh? Oh, you know, we ask. He is this coming Saturday. So we'll see some of you on Saturday. Thank you.